Almighty God, we bless your name for bringing us to this point in this Congress. We thank you, Lord, for the mighty things you have done in our midst. We thank you for the joy of the Lord we have experienced. Thank you for the great Christian experiences you have granted your children. And thank you because we know that as we move on and march forward, we are going to do exploits. We know that every life here is important and significant before you. And we know that you are going to use everyone. We pray, Lord, that you will wake us up to the great responsibility you are giving unto us. And we are asking that you will so bless us and then channel your blessing through us to other people around and beyond. We pray that for a short time we have before us this morning, you will speak to our hearts. And your word will so touch and change our lives that will change this country and this continent. We know you can do it. You must have people here that can change this country. You must have people here that can turn this continent around. You must have people here you can entrust with your power and the anointing that breaks the yoke. There must be people here that can bring those who are in darkness out of their darkness. There must be people here who can impress and impact this nation with righteousness that exalts a nation. There must be people here who can stop the wind and the storm of judgment that is coming on this nation. There are people, brothers and sisters, who may not know as yet what you intend to do with their lives. But we know that as the plans unfold, great will be the victory. And I pray that these people here this morning, as we get the challenge from you, will move out of this place to conquer, to subdue, and to have dominion that nothing will conquer us that every knee will be bent at the mention of the name of Jesus that exploits that were read off in the Bible you will do through brothers and sisters who are here this morning in Jesus name our prayer is may none be left out May everyone become useful in your hand. You will do it. Our hearts will rejoice. Our world will be glad we live in this world. And for all eternity, we'll be forever grateful that you used us as instruments to fulfill your purpose on earth. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. We praise the name of the Lord for bringing us to the conclusion of the Congress this year. Time will fail us to express a gratitude to God as well as to thank all our non-student workers as well as our student workers and leaders who have helped one way or the other to make this Congress this year a success. And time will fill us to express our gratitude to our leaders in our various states and to the church for supporting us and helping to finance one way or the other, some parts of the Congress. I'm particularly grateful 
for the ministry of the members of the choir. Um, I don't know, maybe it's because I love Christian music, and whenever I hear good singing, it turns me on. And um, the singing here has been wonderful and superb. And I pray that all of us on our campuses, you take the kind of singing you've got here, you know, the singing that doesn't make you feel like um, running and jumping and dancing and holding somebody and being emotional, but something that, that goes deep into your very heart. And the singing that can even lead you to pray and lead you to surrender your life totally to the Lord, I think it's been good singing. Don't you think so? And our brothers and sisters hidden away in the kitchen who have been cooking for us. We didn't get to see their faces like we've seen the faces of the members of the choir. But I know that none of them will lose their reward in Jesus' name. And those of you who have been really praying early in the morning and late at night, wanting the revival to come down upon this congress, you can see the Lord has answered your prayer. And then those who have been praying that our campuses will change. Do you know God has answered already? As a result of your praying through this week and you knocking at the gate of the Lord and wanting to take the kingdom by violence, I believe things will not be the same anymore in Jesus' name. And uh, other people that we may not be able to mention by name or by section. The section of work they belong to. We just want you to know that we are very grateful. And we thank the Lord that you can submit yourself and surrender your talents to be used of the Lord. This morning, I don't know how short or how long it will be. But I know, however short or long, you will go in the might of the Lord. In Judges chapter 6, reading from verse 14. Judges chapter 6, from verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee and he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. It's from verse 14 that we're taking the title of our message this morning go in this thy might that watch was spoken to Gideon watch was the circumstance around which or in which Gideon found himself watch what the prevailing circumstances in the nation to which Gideon belonged. What were the failures and the needs they had experienced in that nation of Israel? What was the profession of this man, Gideon? What did the Lord want him to do? What did he eventually accomplish? How many people did God raise up to support him so that the work will be done. To understand the context of the passage we have read, we'll need to go back to verse 1 of chapter 6 so that you'll see the circumstances around him, the situation in which he found himself, the devastation, the destruction, that had come upon the nation. The desolation that was found all around in that nation of Israel. The fear, the timidity that had come upon all the children of Israel 
that had been impoverished. And how everybody felt that there was no solution. And yet, when the solution was to come, God came to a single man. And he said, go, in this thy might. And he went in the strength of the Lord with the 300 pitfalls that followed with him. And they conquered. Do you know we're going to conquer? It doesn't matter how dark things may appear to be, how bleak, how gloomy things may appear to be, we shall conquer. In chapter 6, reading from verse 1, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of Midian seven years. They had been in slavery and servitude for those seven years. It says in verse 2, And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And it was so. And so it was. When Israel had sown, and the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites, and the children of the east, even they came up against them, and they encamped against them, and destroyed the increase of the earth, till thou come unto Gaza, and left no sustenance in, for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. And for they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Here we find the condition of the children of Israel. At a time, the word came forth to Gideon. Talk about slavery in their own land. They thought they had got independence, at least from the Egyptian bondage. They were not under any foreign rule. They had been rejoicing. They thought now they could govern themselves. A government of the people, by the people, for the people. But in the land of so-called independence, they came into slavery. The Lord had also told them that they were coming into a land flowing with milk and honey. A land of plenty, land of prosperity. And in that prosperity... They forgot the Lord, and eventually their economy totally broke down. And it says there was no sustenance, no, not in Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. Is that not the same as the situation in which we find ourselves? We're independent, but in servitude. We appear to be independent politically, but there is confusion and there is oppression everywhere. And you see the economy. There was a time when the Naira was stronger than the dollar. When you could have maybe one Naira to give you one dollar fifty cents. Later it became one Naira one dollar. Later, one dollar, two naira. Later, one dollar, five naira. And we thought everything was down. Everything had collapsed. Later, one dollar to twenty naira. And we thought things must not go beyond this. Because this is the very limit and the bottom. Later, it became one naira to fifty. One dollar to fifteen naira, and we thought it will never be worse than this. This is the worst we're going to see. Then it became 
One dollar to sixteen naira, then to seventeen, then to eighteen, then to eighty-five. One dollar to ninety-one naira. It's now getting to one dollar to hundred naira. You see, the children of Israel at this time, no sustenance. And you see in the nation today, because now it's very difficult for the average fellow to be able to eat three meals a day. Some just two meals a day. And some have programmed themselves and programmed their families that it will just be one meal a day. We know the experience on the campus. Gone were the days when students will have textbooks, have accommodation, have pocket money, and be able to do whatever they could do very easily. Not only that, gone were the days when you earned your certificate because you sweated for it. And because you studied and you said, I know, because there were the internal examiners and there were the external examiners that would look at how the lecturers marked the papers. And there was no way you could mark any other way because the external examiners were going to look at it. Things are changing. And things are changing very fast. Now, the social situation, the economic situation, and everything you see around you, look at it like the children of Israel at this time. And it wasn't for one week. It wasn't for one month. It wasn't for one year or two years. Seven long years. And then the children of Israel, they cried unto the Lord. I believe in this country, things can change. I'm so encouraged. I see thousands of you here, very young, very active, having faith in God, knowing that if those politicians and if those people that are deciding on uh, in the Constitutional Conference, if they cannot make a change, thank God there is an army of people here that can make a change. Our prayers will make the change. Our commitment will make the change. Our response to the call of God upon our lives will make a change in this country and continent in Jesus' name. And you know, when the prophet of God, Elisha, when he said, by this time tomorrow, things will change, economy will change, food will come. One of the politicians of the day, the man assisting the president, if it were today, we'll call him the vice president. He said, even if God opened the doors or the windows of heaven, can these things be? That's contest between prophet and politician. The politician said, things cannot change. With all our political science understanding, and with all the analysis of what had been happening, from the first republic to the second, and then to the military, from his political understanding, he said, Things cannot change. And the prophet said, both of us will be alive when it begins to happen. But unfortunately, you will not live through the change. I pray you will live through the change. We've gone through these years of depression and oppression. And it's about time for the people of God to say, things cannot continue like this. Things must change. And we will live through to see the time of that change in Jesus' name. Do you know things are going to change? I said, do you know things are going to change? On our campuses, things are going to change. In churches all over the nation, things are going to change. And in the political atmosphere, things are going to change. And you are part of the instrument of God to bring that change. And so, in that situation, while the children of Israel were crying unto the Lord and calling upon the Lord, then the Lord looked down and he came unto Gideon and said, Gideon, go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? 
I'm appealing to you this day. From what we have learned or what we have sung, do not let narrow sail your way be bad. God is going to use you. You are going to go in the might of the Lord. In the might of the Lord. Maybe you are responding like Gideon. And you are saying, oh my Lord. Wherewith shall I of all people save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. Think of the least in a poor family. The least of the poor, which means the poorest in the land. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. Do you know the Lord is with you already? As you go back to your campuses, um, our national coordinator yesterday was saying he believes that before a long time, our campuses are going to be open. You know, the time your campus will open depends on the time you use the key in your hand to open the gate. Because the two of you shall agree as touching anything, anything, everybody say anything. Anything that you ask of our Father in heaven, do you know the Lord will do it. And if you decide that you are going to use that key to unlock the locked doors of our campuses, I believe those campuses are going to be opened. Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. The Lord is sending us like a saint Gideon, and is telling us to go in this thy might. What's the Lord telling us to go and do? Number one, go forth and shine. Go forth and shine. Number two, go forth preach and teach. Go forth, preach and teach. Number three, go forth and lift up a standard. We want to see a standard. We want to see a model. We want to see something coming from heaven that the rest of us can follow. Number four, go forth, heal and deliver. There are too many sick people around you. And the doctors are not able to do it alone. Sometimes the nurses are even on strike. And yet God is giving you power. That now that you are a child of God, you too, you go forth, you heal, and you deliver. Number five, go forth, succeed, and conquer. You are going to succeed. The devil, whether he likes it or not, the Lord has set an open door before you that no man can shut. Go forth, succeed, and conquer. Let's go to number one. In Isaiah chapter 60, Isaiah chapter 60, reading from verse 1, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. You see, from the moment you become born again, you begin to receive the glory that we lost in the fall. You begin to receive that glory back. Because it says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when you receive salvation, then you receive a part of God. Christ comes into you. And it is a glorified Christ. That comes into you. Now it says, now that you have known the Lord, now that you are a child of God, now that you have been cleansed from your sin, now that you have gone deep into the experiences of the Christian life, arise. It is time to shine. For thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Not that it was upon you, it, or that it will be upon you in the future, it is upon you already in Jesus' name. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but 
the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. As you go, the glory of the Lord will be seen upon you. You will not see any curse upon you. There is no curse on you anymore. There is no charm. There is no enchantment. There is no spell anybody can place upon you anymore. The anointing has broken the yoke. Now you are free. Even when the devil sees you now, he doesn't see you just like that. You are hidden in Christ in God. And therefore, when any of the agents of the devil see you, they cannot see you without seeing you enveloped in Christ. With, it's like Christ being like a blanket and you are covered completely because the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon you. In verse 3, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. All those unconverted people on the campuses, the glory of God will so much be upon you. The anointing of God will so much be upon your life. It will be drawing them. Those unconverted Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy, of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about. There's nothing to be afraid of now. There's nothing to cringe for. There is nothing to fear. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons, your converts, shall come from far. And thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then shalt thou see and flow together. Thine heart will reverence God shall fear and be enlarged. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. Are you still poor? I said, are you still poor? The abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. And the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. It is time then for you to realize that as you are living here today, you are going to rise up and you are going to shine. And the glory of the Lord is going to go with every one of you. In Isaiah chapter 52, Isaiah chapter 52 verse 1, Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth, there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. We're not going to be rising and falling anymore. Uncleanness will not come into our midst anymore. All the temptations, all the things that put a back to the wall in times past, all those things are removed in Jesus' name. In verse 2, it says, Shake thyself from the dust. That means you were defeated before, the devil put you on the ground before, and you, are, you had all your body dusty. He says now that the unclean shall not come into you anymore, shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Now the Lord has broken the yoke. He has broken all the fetters. All he wants you to do it for Lazarus. After Lazarus was raised from the dead, he told the people around, you see that he's alive, loose him and remove all those grave clothes and let him go. It says, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. That means you will say, I don't have any yoke of the devil on me anymore. I don't have any demonic oppression anymore. I don't have any of these things that the devil put upon me before anymore. Now I shake myself from the dust. And I'm going to arise and shine. In verse 7, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good things, uh, that publisheth salvation, and says unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. From now on, Satan will not reign in your life. And all the agents of Satan, they will not reign in your life. In life, or in the dream, in the day, or in the night, 
your God reigns. Thy watchmen shall lift up their voice. The voice with the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye. When the Lord shall bring again Zion. There is no unity in our midst. We will see eye to eye. No disagreement anymore. No conflict anymore. No division on our campuses anymore. We are now so united. We are going to go forth in the power of the Lord. We are going to get the job done. Verse 9. Break forth into joy. If you have been weeping before, wipe your tears away. This is the time to rejoice. It's the time to know that our God is with us. Sing together. Ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Now conversions are going to be multiplied on our campuses because the Lord's might and power has risen upon us. In Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, from verse 16. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, as we're going, the number one thing we want to go and do is go forth and shine. Number two, go forth and Preach and teach. The Lord has given us people. He has given us his power. He has given us the knowledge of salvation. And it is time now for us to realize we have something to do. And it is to preach the gospel in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go to your world. Go to the campus world. And go to the members of staff and non-academic staff and the students as well. And preach the gospel to every creature. That is the mandate, the commission. The Lord has given to every one of us. And I believe we can do it. And we will do it. And many will be turned unto the Lord. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We're going forth to witness. We're going forth to proclaim the good news of salvation. We're going for to tell the lost, now salvation is available, full and free. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. And then as they get born again, they are baptized in water. But then they are integrated with the campus fellowship. They are integrated with the people of God. So that you will have the privilege and the duty, the opportunity of going on to teach them. In verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you how often? Always, even until the end of the world. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. So you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, of whom shall I be afraid. As we go forth, we're going forth to preach. And we will uh, comb every campus. And we will develop programs where we will be able to reach out to the uh, students there. We should be checking up campuses where we do not have any fellowship at present. And we should be planning maybe uh, two campuses that are near in the same city they will adopt a campus that had no fellowship at present it's like a father and a mother 
adopting a child that had been born with nobody to take care of that child. And so let us look around in this nation and let us find out campuses where as yet we do not operate and let us see what program and what policy and what kind of thing we can do that will make us as we adopt those campuses will help us to be able to reach out to them. You might organize a mission week. You might organize evangelism week. Or it may be that you just want to go there with some people from this campus and that campus and with the campus you have adopted, you want to march around like you march around Jericho walls. And you want to be praying in the name of Jesus. And you want to point at every hall of residence. And you want to point at every department. Oh Lord, bring combats out of this place. Oh Lord, bring combats out of that place. Oh Lord, bring combats out of that place. And the freshmen, those who have just come in uh, for the first session. Oh Lord, before they get involved in the campus university life, knock them and convict them and bring them into the gospel. You may need to do some prayer matches. And you may need to uh, distribute literature. Or you may need to use some of these um, uh, comics that you have got when you are here. You may want some artists in the art department uh, to be able to draw things and paste everywhere. Use all methods you can use so that we'll be able to preach the gospel to every creature and we'll be able to reach out to the people that have not known the Lord at present. And for those of us who are from outside Nigeria, other countries in Africa apart from Nigeria, that it may be that you are very small at present, but uh, do not worry about your smallness. A small one shall become a great nation. The Lord will add unto you until you become very, very many. And look at all the campuses. What you need to do is make a survey and see how many higher institutions are here in our country? Do we have any member of the church already? Or do we have some born-again people already on those campuses? How can we reach out to them? Maybe we're going to start by just sending magazines to them, Christian magazine, and raise up a mailing list in all those campuses, and they become interested. Maybe we're going to do something like a library a library having Christian book, a library having cases. And although the Christian library is on this campus, we are giving information to all those other campuses in the country that do not have any lively Bible fellowship on the campus. And we're sending articles to them. And we're telling them they can write, you can get a cassette. And when you have listened to the cassette, you can pass it on. But you can also, if you return it intact without getting it spoiled, we'll, sp we'll send another case to you. It may be we're going to employ a lot of methods so that we can reach out to the people. Or it may be those of you from other countries that we will arrange. We have so many students all over here in Nigeria that know the Lord, that are on fire for the Lord. It may be we're going to have some exchange program that we will have some of these uh, students in the campuses in the countries in Africa be with us on our campuses and see how the deeper life campus fellowship is moving on, how we have the fellowship and interact with us. And then after they have spent whether two weeks or one month with us in the exchange program, then 20 people from this campus will volunteer that they are going to go to the campus in Zambia, or they are going to go to Zimbabwe, or they are going to go to Ghana, and they are going to spend just a month in that exchange program. And before you come back from that exchange program, you are going to turn that country upside down. And you are going to reach those campuses. And then as the campus work, as the fellowship is lively and strong here in this country, with your impact, with the power of God upon your life, with the gospel you are going to be sharing with them in that kind of exchange program you are going to reach out to those various countries now it may be that you see in Africa we have more French speaking countries than English speaking countries and um, maybe you do not know the language at present 
it may surprise you that in my busy schedule, I started learning French. And um, I didn't like um, art subjects when I was at school. I only liked the science subject, mathematics, physics, and related subjects. I hated uh, subjects like history, like geography, like uh, economics, and like uh, literature, and like uh, languages. I just couldn't, I, I, it, wasn't, uh, my, it wasn't to my taste. All I wanted was to have the axiom and, you know, those formulas and make all my conclusions and everything. I, I like abstract things. But then I started seeing that if we're going to fulfill the Great Commission, that we need to be able to read these French-speaking countries. And what I did was to take a teacher. And every day in 1991, 1992, I will go to that teacher in Lagos here, an American a missionary who had spent many years in France. And then I will go there. He gets me through the grammar. He gets me through comprehension. He gets me through a lot of things. Then the phonetics and all the things that you have to do. Even though I still kept on my normal Bible study, my revival hour, I still kept on retreats and things like that. Recently, I took, uh, you know, somebody in Deeper Life here, a member of Deeper Life, a brother, who knows the French language at least better than I do. And I was going for retreat. I said, brother, I need to, uh, you know, polish this language. I need to know it more. Follow me to the retreat just for that. And he, you know, was kind enough to give a whole week and he followed me to the retreat. When I finish my morning message at the retreat, then I go to him. I say, now our lesson. And you know, we go through and go through. Then when the time comes in the evening to go and preach, I say, well, uh, preaching has come now. I go for preaching while they are giving testimonies. I run back to that brother and say, now can we have our lesson? Even as busy as I am, this same year that I'm still studying that thing. Now, you young people, we need to reach out to these French-speaking countries and to the Portuguese-speaking countries and to the Spanish-speaking countries. If I, at this level, if I, with all the load of work upon me, can still endeavor to do that, I believe you can do it. And I believe you will do it. So, we will see what to do, whatever exchange program we're going to have. If we're going to be sent to these various countries during our long vacation to be able to evangelize and to be able to reach out to the people, I believe it will be done. Because the Lord is calling you and calling me. Go forth, preach, and teach. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. From verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Don't preach philosophy. Preach the word. Don't preach human opinion. Preach the word. Don't preach just what you want people to do. Preach the word. Don't preach politics. Preach the word. Don't preach culture or tribalism. Preach the word. This is the commission the Lord is giving to us and is sending us out and is saying as we are going forth. This is the challenge and this is the charge is given to you. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Do not drop the doctrine. The doctrines are very important and our leaders and teachers have done so and they have made us to know the cardinal major doctrines of the Bible. They are the pillars. We cannot tamper with them. These are the things the Lord has committed to the church. And he has told the church, you uh, preach, you make converts, you make disciples, and you teach them. But three, for the time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, shall they keep to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn themselves away. From they shall turn away their hearts, their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Watch thou in all things. All things. And then it says, endure afflictions. There may be some difficulties. There may be some kind of trials. We had about that yesterday. There may be things that will challenge your faith, that will test your love. 
that will examine how serious and sincere you are with the Lord. Endure those afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist on your campus. Do the work of an evangelist. Do you know that many years before this time, uh, that is about 20, 25 years ago, actually, it was the campus that evangelized the secondary school. The campus students, they acted as evangelists and soul winners to the students in the secondary school. And you will find that in the program of the uh, Christian Union at that time and of the Christian fellowships at that time, part of their program was evangelism. Not only evangelism on the campus, but evangelism to the secondary school children and the young people, those teenagers who are getting converted as a result of that. Do the work of an evangelist on your church. To the non-staff um, or to the non-academic staff, do it. And to the members of staff, do it. Wonderful enough that now we have some members of staff on our, in our higher institutions that are here in a congress like this. We praise the Lord that you are so humble to be able to be in the same meeting with your students. But it's a challenge. We are to reach the members of staff. And those members of staff are to also reach the people in the community. Let every one of us commit ourselves to the work of the evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. I believe it will be done. Number three, go forth, lift up a standard. Lift up a standard. Brothers and sisters, if there is anything that should bring sorrow in the heart of a child of God, it is that as you look at our various campuses, it appears there is no standard. There is no shining example. There is no model. It appears that many of the fellowships on the campuses, they have gone back to the time of the children of Israel at the time of the judges. Look at Judges, the last chapter, the last verse. Judges, the last chapter, the last verse. Chapter 21, verse 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel, no leadership in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. We find multiplicity of Christian groups and other kinds of groups and clubs on the campuses today. But then, there is no standard. There is no standard in doctrine. There is no standard in Christian living. There is no standard in worship. It appears that everyone just likes to do whatever seems right in his own eyes. But the Lord is giving us a challenge. That as you leave this place today and you are going back to your campuses and going back to your communities, you are going to lift up a standard for the people to see. God will help you. And God will support you and sustain you. Remember, please, you are not alone. Although we are dispersing today, we'll continue praying for one another. And whatever challenges you may face, I believe the power of the Lord will continue to support and sustain you. In Isaiah chapter 62, verse 10, I said, chapter 62, verse 10, Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people, cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. As you are going back to your various campuses, you are going forth so you can lift up a standard. You will go through that means there will be an organized way in which we go through all the campuses in a region, all the campuses in a state, and all the campuses in the nation, and all the campuses uh, in the nations represented in this Congress, and the campuses of other nations where the people were not able to come at this time. And as you go, it tells you, you'll prepare the way of the people. That is, the rough ways. 
the ways of the hill and the mountain and the ditches, not making it convenient for the people to walk smoothly and get into the kind of life the Lord wants them to get into. You will cast up the highway. You will gather up the stones, that is, the stumbling stones. First of all, you start with your own fellowship. You say, what are we doing in this fellowship? That could be a stumbling block for the people that are coming. What are we doing in this fellowship? In our singing, in our preaching, in the people we invite to the, uh, to the campus fellowship to come and preach. And in the kind of messages we have, what are the things we're doing in this fellowship that, help, that does not help the people or do not help the people to maintain the standard of the totality of the word of God? You pick up, you gather out those stones, the stumbling blocks, and then you lift up a standard for the people. By the example in the way you live yourself from the fellow, from the person that is leading uh, the executive on that campus. To all the officers, all the workers there. To all the members of the choir. To all the fellowships, the colonia. Everyone, we make sure that in every little group and in every section and the totality of the student body who are Christians fellowshipping with us, we lift up a standard. We do that on every campus, and we do that in every region, and we do that in every state, so that no matter which fellowship we visit, no matter which fellowship, one student will go from this fellowship, maybe because of wanting to change university, or change a course, or what he wants to do is not really handled specially on this campus. He wants to go to another campus, and he's been a Christian on the other campus. It will be the same standard will have that uniform standard that we have lifted up and there will be no confusion. We will not be saying, which one do we really follow? This campus is doing it this way. That campus is doing it that way. Which one is the real thing? Every one of us will endeavor to lift up the standard. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Thus says the Lord, Stand ye in the ways. See and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein. That's part of lifting up the standard. You stand in the way. And you find out and you check out. Which one is as old as the Bible? Which one is as old as the ancient of days? Which way? Which doctrine? Which lifestyle, which way of worship is as old as the almighty God that has given it to us? What has he revealed to us in his own word? So that we are not confused by all the modern, worldly, materialistic, uh, psychedelic kind of worship we see on the various campuses. You will ask yourself, where is the old path? And where is the good way? When you find it, you walk therein. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. In Jude, verse 3. Jude, verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints, earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. Remember that you will not be a student all through your life. Remember that your being a student now is only a preparation for the future life. Remember that if Jesus tarries, you will be the pastors and the overseers of the New Testament church tomorrow. Remember that you are preparing the ground now. While you are in your formative years, while you are saying, Oh Lord, teach me everything in this world, 
and prepare me for leadership in the church and leadership in the corporations and leadership in the countries and leadership in the society, the society of tomorrow. You have to show that today you can maintain the standard. You can stand by the word of God. You have to be able to stand for the truth today so that tomorrow in future, if Jesus tarries, if you come into any position of responsibility to be able to declare the standard to the people that will be in the church, because you will not be a student all your life, you will not be a student fellowship all your life, and if you are going to teach those adults in the future, you would have been able to know this is standard, you are walking by the standard, you are lifting up the standard. Therefore, you earnestly, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Maybe you are forgetting, or maybe you have not even, you have never known it. When we started this uh, campus fellowship in the early 80s, the existing Christian fellowships on the campuses, they were so upset, they were unhappy, that Deeper Life will have a Deeper Life campus fellowship. Even though we were mild at the beginning, and we called it HIP, Higher Institutions Program, yet they knew that these Deeper Life militant people, they knew that if they came on the campus, they knew that it was going to really turn things around. They persecuted the few students that started the fellowships. In some of the campuses, uh, these so-called Christians will lock up a deeper life a uh, Christian with a student and be telling them it's like torturing them to surrender and to tell them that they are not going to have the deeper life campus fellowship on that campus. And those pioneers of the campus fellowship, they really suffered. If you were a student at that time, you will remember in the West Chair at Ibadan, in the Polytechnic, at the University of Ibadan, and in a lot of other places. And the challenge was so great. But you know, those people that started the campus fellowship, they were willing to suffer anything. And it is out of their suffering, out of their endurance, that you have what we have today. And we are not yet at the end of the road. What you see today is even small in comparison with what is still coming. Because the Lord has given you this land. The Lord has given you the campuses. And you will take those campuses for Jesus in the name of the Lord. Therefore, as you go, lift up a standard. Number four, go forth, heal, and deliver. Go forth, Heal and deliver. There are so many hurting people around you. Have compassion on them. There are so many sick people, oppressed people around you. Have compassion on them. There are so many people that the doctors, even with the advancement of medical science, the doctors are telling them there's nothing they can do for them. You can do something for them. So you go forth to heal and to deliver in Matthew chapter 10, from verses 7 and 8. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Can you do it? Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. So as you go forth, that's part of what the Lord wants you to do. That the people who are sick, the people who are being tormented, you'll raise up strong prayer warriors on your campuses. You'll raise up intercessors, mighty intercessors on your campuses. The people that will be able to destroy every yoke in the life of the members as well as the non-Christians that are just seeking the Lord and seeking deliverance. You see, the deliverance uh, uh, ministry as people college has been um, eroded into and you see a lot of methods and you see a lot of practices and a lot of things that people do. But why don't you 
Now that you know the truth, now that you know the power of God, and now that you know that you can go in this thy might and deliver the people, why don't you take up the challenge and by the grace of God get the people delivered? They'll be delivered in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, Gideon, because it's from Gideon we're taking the text and the topic we're talking about. Gideon told the people, look at me and do as I do. And um, maybe some of you, you've been with us in some of the various retreats. You've been with us in various places. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself, he has said, I give unto you power. I believe he has given the power to you. And you know, we don't labor. We don't have to uh, do all these things that the people are doing. When it comes to healing and comes to deliverance, don't say, I don't have the power. I'm telling you, you have the power. Say amen. amen. How do you do it? Very simple. It is the name of Jesus. I remember um, one day at Bagada, it wasn't a meeting day. I had finished my office work and I was about to go home. And then four hefty men, very strong men, they were dragging a young man. The man was violent. For some days, he had not been able to eat anything. And he was stronger than the four of them. And yet younger in age than the four of them. He was possessed with powerful, terrible demons. Hurting him, wanting to destroy himself. I had entered the vehicle, about to go home. And I'd already prayed, uh, you know, the prayer you pray when you just want to move from one place to the other. And uh, just as uh, the vehicle was to move, they dragged him. And they said, please, please. Uh, we have not been sleeping for days. This uh, young man is a demon possessed and we don't know what to do. We have prayed, we have shouted, we have tried to cast out the thing. I said, you don't respect, you don't, you don't give so much attention to the devil like that. The devil will think that, you know, he's having, uh, you know, a day with you. It's, uh, you know, it, it really gets your attention. So I, you know, rolled down the screen the glass of the vehicle i didn't stand up how do you stand up for the devil so I, I just sat down at the back of the vehicle and i said in the name of jesus you devil what are you doing there get out and then i said in jesus name and then i said young man that's the man that had it i said what's your name he told me his name I said, what's the name of this uh, person? He said, so and so, my brother. I said, yeah, about this person? I said, go home. Don't make trouble any anymore. The devil is no more there. And he went home. And he came back like, the following week to tell me that he slept, he ate, everything was completely okay. You can do it. Uh, you know, just this year, uh, some two people brought a mentally... Uh, disturbed person, insane, a, a woman, and uh, she'll be crying, she'll be shouting, she'll be disturbing and destroying things. And these uh, two people that brought them, they were, uh, they are not deep alive. They belong to another gospel Pentecostal church. They've been in their church and they have prayed and prayed, and they have been in some other places. They have prayed and prayed. They, they've gone everywhere, and at last they said. Why don't we go to deeper life and see their pastor there? Maybe he can, uh, you know, pray for this woman. And so they came. And they came in company of other people. And when they came, the two of them, uh, one of them knew deeper life a little. Even though he's not a member of deeper life, the other one didn't know deeper life at all as such. And so I just uh, said, now let's pray. I said, the Lord, well, thank you because you are here. And you have told us there's nothing impossible. I said, break the chain there. Destroy the evil thing there. Let there be a turning point in their lives now in Jesus' name. Amen. And after I, you know, prayed like that, I said, that's all right. Uh, now everything is okay. You can go back. So when they went out, one of the people told uh, the other fellow and said, have they finished? Is that how they are going to pray for this sin we have been battling with? Let's go back to him and tell him that this is a special case. So the other one, the other one said that this is deeper life. That's how they pray. 
And that's how God, uh, you know, does things. And so they went home. And the other fellow that didn't really believe, uh, she was watching. The first, that uh, woman got back home, she ate, she took her bath, she slept, and she started discussing with them. Then the other fellow said, it appears that this thing has uh, worked. It appears that the healing has come. And that was it. That's how that woman was totally delivered. You see, you are going to do the same thing. You don't have to shout and sweat for the devil. You will just command and with a word of command, it will be done in Jesus' name. I went to Ibadan some time ago. I was invited there. And I, not deeper life meeting. This was uh, another Christian fellowship. And I, when I finished, I prayed for the people. And the Lord led me to say, now, you people here that have never prayed for the sick, you'll start uh, praying for the sick tonight. So I said, raise up your hand. They raised up their hands. I simply said, oh Lord, anoint those hands and give them the healing ministry. And I said, amen. And they went home that night. So one of the sisters there, she never prayed for headache before to go. She never prayed for stomach trouble to go. But when she got home, she discovered a boy that was deaf. And so she said, well, although they said they anointed our hands, if you are going to start anything, you go from small to big. But if I start with this one and nothing happens, it's going to so destroy my faith, I may not be able to try anything anymore. But the Spirit of God said, why don't you try? Who knows what will happen? Okay, she said, I'll do it the way that man did it in the fellowship. Uh, so he called uh, the boy and then he said, in Jesus' name, get out. And uh, after she prayed for some time and repeated, get out, get out for some time, in Jesus' name, then he spoke and the boy responded. The deafness had passed away. Then she looked for where I was and then she couldn't get to me that night. But the following morning, she was so excited. She said, Pastor, nothing worked. I prayed for somebody deaf and the thing came out immediately. If that happened in a place where I just preached only one message and it's not, it's not deeper life oriented, if that could happen to them, many things are going to happen through you. In Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, from verse 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. Are we believers here? In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They will recover. The Lord has given us that power. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke. In Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power. To tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. If you step mistakenly step on charm, it will not hurt you. If any witchcraft fellow, sorcerer, or familiar spirit girl, or mommy water spirit individual tries to do anything against you from this hour, it will not work in Jesus' name. Uh, some time ago, we had uh, some people, uh, a brother here in Lagos, a young man, and this young man, uh, there was another fellow uh, in the world that felt that the young Christian offended him. And he wanted to see something, what he will do, so that he will hurt him. And so, in the night, while the brother was sleeping, he used all their evil power, occultic power, and witchcraft. He wanted to go and slap the brother while the brother was asleep, so that if he slapped that young uh, Christian like that, after that, when he woke up in the morning, he'll be having some funny experiences and some kind of uh, sicknesses. But that brother was asleep. The Lord is watching over you when you are asleep. When you are awake, the Lord is watching over you too. And so 
the fellow with the evil power, he raised up his hand and he, and he was seeing that uh, person in the occultic uh, kind of thing. And he tried to slap him like this and his hand struck an invisible wall. His son couldn't touch that uh, young man. And the young man was fast asleep. So he, came, he said he did all the incantation and all, you know, all these foolish things. These people, like, they don't know A, A from B or left from right. They think that when the angels of God are surrounding a person, they think that in incantation can affect angels of God surrounding you. I think these people, they are very foolish. It's like, oh foolish Galatians. They are deceived. And so he did all his incantations again and tried to slap him and he slapped an invisible wall. So he doubled up incantation and everything and he tried to do it again and he slapped an invisible wall. During the day, he came to the brother and he said, tell me the secret. You have something. There is something you have you didn't tell me. And the brother said, what is it? What do I have? You know me now. I just read my Bible. I'm a child of God. And I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. That's a secret. Covered with the blood of Jesus. Then the fellow said, have mercy on me. I try to destroy you. But my hand always struck invisible wall. The Lord is protecting you. Why are you afraid? You know, a few years ago, we had one of our pastors. He's still a pastor, one of our pastors today. And um, the village where they were, the villagers said there will be no church in that place. And they said that if they met on Sunday, they were going to come with all their evil power and physical weapons and going to do anything. They could destroy, they could kill, they could cut, they could do anything and destroy that church building. And so the pastor ran to me and said, Sir, I've never seen a problem like this before. These villagers, and we know them, the minute they are going to do it. And uh, they, he then told me what they plan to do. And said, what are we going to do? Then we prayed. I said, go back and don't say anything to those church members. Uh, on Sunday, meet together. No problem. You don't have any problem if you have faith in God. So on Saturday night, all those Habalists and Jew people and those who wanted to destroy uh, that church and the people, they met together. They were having a meeting, a strategy meeting. How they will come this way and come this way and corner them up and do this and do that. While they were in the midst of the meeting at midnight, one of them, his eyes opened and he saw a soldier, not really is an angel of God, saw a soldier armed coming and he shouted, and said, soldier, soldiers. When he said, soldier, soldiers, all the people, they let all their incantation, all the juju, everything, they let everything and scattered and ran away. Since that time that they scattered, they have never regarded again. And this is the power God has given unto you. As you go forth, you are going forth to heal and to deliver. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing but nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Number five, before we pray, go forth, succeed, and conquer. Do you know you are going to succeed? There is no failure for you. God has not appointed you to failure. You are going to succeed. And you are going for to your campuses this new session. And your success is going to be beyond what you ever saw in your life. Why are we so much forgetting? Don't you remember? You will be the head and you will not be the tail. If there is anything wrong with your IQ, the Lord is going to increase it. I heard a brother testifying last night that he, before he came to this uh, congress, he could not read for more than one hour. That situation has changed in Jesus' name. Now you'll be able to read. And you will read what is relevant. And you will succeed. And those people of the world are going to come back and they are going to say, How did you do it? You will simply say, It is the heritage of the children of God. 
In Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1 verse 3. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, in verse 5, There shall no man, there shall not any man, be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto, thy, unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand, that's a secret, or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Whatever campus you are, where you are having your studies, you will prosper. In verse 8, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate there in day and night. And thou, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have not only success good success you will have it you will have it every hindrance will be blown out of the way you are going to succeed Romans chapter 8 from verse 31 Romans chapter 8 from verse 31 what shall we say then to these things if God be for us who can be against us he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He will freely give you all things. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's select? No one. Because he is justified. It is God that justified. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Do you know the Lord is praying for you every day? He's praying for you that your faith will not fail. He's praying for you that you will succeed. He's praying for you that every purpose of God in your life will be perfected and he will do it. As he's written, then he says in verse 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, we are for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, in all these things, whatever happens, the world may seem to be upside down. The sea may roar. The unbelievers may threaten. In all these things, we, not they, but we, we the children of God, we the covenant people of God, we who have gathered to the Lord with a covenant, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Are we more than conquerors? For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What else are we afraid about? Death or height? life or death, principalities or powers, angels or demons, nothing can hinder the purpose of God in our lives. It's time to conquer. It's time to subdue everything around. It's time to have dominion. And we're going to have dominion. Lift up your head, square your shoulders, stand straight and stand erect. God has given you the land. Rise up and let us talk to the Lord in prayer. In Jesus' name we pray.
In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have revealed to us. We thank you because you have saved people in this place. You have sanctified believers here. You have filled sanctified believers with the Holy Ghost. You have given us your word. You have revealed your mind to us. You have taught us the doctrines of Christ. And we have received so much from you. Our lives have been touched and transformed. We know we are never going to be the same anymore. Oh Lord, we are now going forth. And we are going forth in your mind. We are going forth in your power. We know that no demon or evil man will be able to stand before any of your children in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh Lord, I pray that as your children march forward, they'll march in victory. They'll walk as conquerors. They will be overcomers in Jesus' name. I pray, oh Lord, they will go forth and they will shine. That their Christian lives will attract people to the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Every kind of evil, evil habit, or darkness, or sin that had conquered them before. Oh Lord, I pray you give them power to be able to overcome them in Jesus' name. I pray that the reality of the cleansing of the blood of Jesus will be the experience in Jesus' name. That, Lord, you put your glory upon them. That they will shine forth. And their roommates or their classmates or their schoolmates that see them, they will see the glory of God upon them in Jesus' name. As your people go, give them the compassion. Give them the conviction. Give them the consecration to preach and teach your word in Jesus' name. As they preach, let your word be like fire in their mouth that will consume wood and everything that ought to be consumed in Jesus' name. As they preach your word, let your word be like hammer that will break the stony ass and the rocks in pieces in Jesus' name. As they preach, I pray that hardened sinners, the people that have refused to yield all these years, they'll be crying out and saying, Men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? And I pray that through their preaching, multitudes will be saved in Jesus' name. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will empower our members of staff who are here. Empower no student workers who are here. Empower all the students that are here. So that in every campus, the preaching and teaching of the word will be going on unhindered in Jesus' name. I pray that through these students and members of staff here, you will lift up a standard on every campus, in every region and every state. In all those institutions, lift up a standard in Jesus' name. And I pray, oh Lord, that the level of commitment to the real Christian faith will change on every campus. In the countries represented here, I pray something new will begin. Something fresh will begin. Something mighty and powerful will begin in Jesus' name. And I pray whatever needs are there on the campus, you'll use these brothers and sisters gathered here in their thousands this week to meet all those needs in Jesus' name. Now everyone, you'll raise up your hand. Father, in the name of the Lord, these are the hands to heal the sick. These are the people to deliver the oppressed. These are the people to snatch the captives out of the hands of the devil. I pray that all these hands that are raised up, you anoint them. You empower them. You energize them in Jesus' name. That as they pray for the sick, the sick will recover. 
As they mention the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Husbands will lay hands on the wives and the wives will recover. Wives will lay hands on the husband, the husband will recover. Parents will lay hands on their children, they will recover. Children will lay hands on their fathers and mothers, they will recover. Students will lay hands on one another, they will recover. I pray that mighty power, mighty anointing, the kind of anointing that breaks the yoke will come upon every student, will come upon every Christian, will come upon every member of staff. Great and mighty things will be done in Jesus' name. I pray that these brothers and sisters here today, as they go forth, they will succeed. I pray, O oh Lord, cancel failure from them in Jesus' name. I pray that everyone that pronounces failure, you silence them. That these people who are here today, they will be the head and not the tail in Jesus' name. As they go forth, make them to conquer. And to overcome. That nothing will stand before them in Jesus' name. Herbalists will not stand before them. Witches will not stand before them. Sorcerers will not stand before them. Familiar spirit will not stand before them. All the powers of darkness will fall and crumble before them. In Jesus' name. I pray that your protection will go with them. There will be no accident on the way. The blood of Jesus will cover everyone in Jesus' name. I pray that on their purposes the light of the gospel will shine. The power of the Lord will work mightily. And signs and wonders will follow your children in Jesus' name. I pray, oh Lord, they will never be the same again. I pray that this day will become a turning point. In every one of their lives, in their ministries, and on the fellowships, on the campuses, in Jesus' name. Confirm your power in their lives, in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray.